All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we are finishing up concepts and principles with imitation and observational learning. Now, before we begin our last topic in concepts and principles, we are going to start C after this video. However, before you move on, make sure you're comfortable with all the items in B because it's only going to get a little trickier from here. So make sure you're comfortable with B before we get into measurement and experimental design and all those other things. With that said, we are going to cover imitation and observational learning today. Two very straightforward ideas. It's just understanding the difference between imitation and observational learning. And if you understand those key differences, you should have no issue here. As always, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. You get all of our updates and it really helps us so we can keep putting out these videos. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, and let's get going. So imitation and observational learning, what are they? Well, they lead to new behaviors from observation of others. At the very simplest essence of what these are, we're learning new behaviors and engaging in new behaviors by observing others. Young children, very young children, adults, it doesn't matter who, we all learn by watching. That's one of our primary methods of learning. Just think about when you're in a new environment or even an environment you're comfortable with. You're watching what other people are doing and engaging in behaviors that are similar or the same as what they're doing. With that said, there are some differences. Imitation has formal similarity and immediacy, and we really wanna focus on that idea of immediacy for imitation. Imitation happens right away. Observational learning, we're learning behaviors and skills, but the skill does not happen immediately. So you can observe someone doing something, let's say playing tennis, you watch a skill, and then a week later, you go and play tennis and you try to put into play what you watched a week ago. So that immediacy is going to be a key separator between these two things. So let's start with imitation. It's a behavior that is controlled by a model stimulus. The model and the imitative behavior have formal similarity. And from our verbal operants, we should know formal similarity means they look the same, right? So the model, whatever or whoever the, it is, and the imitated behavior look the same. That's very important. We need formal similarity. Second, the imitative behavior occurs immediately, and that's what we're looking for in imitation, immediacy and formal similarity. If someone models something, 20 minutes later, the client or whoever engages in the behavior, that's not technically imitation. Let's remember that because the model has to be that primary controlling variable for the imitative behavior. So just like if it happens 40 minutes between the model actually doing it, if I say, clap your hands, and then clap my hands, and then the client claps their hands, well, what's really the primary controlling variable? Is it me clapping my hands or is it me using the SD, clap your hands? So imitation should just happen where that model is actually that primary controlling variable or discriminative stimulus for the imitative behavior. All in all, pretty straightforward. Example, a therapist claps their hands, child immediately claps their hands. Clapping their hands is the controlling variable. This formal similarity happens immediately. Parent waves goodbye, toddler waves goodbye. Formal similarity happens immediately. Primary controlling variable is the model. So let's talk about observational learning, which most of you are going to be less familiar with. Observational learning is the acquisition of new behavior, skills, or information by observing others. That, that doesn't change. We're still observing others. We're still observing models and picking up new information and behaviors. However, we don't, or the observer doesn't directly perform the behavior right away. So there's not really immediacy. And they don't contact reinforcement or punishment for it during the observation. In other words, that observation leads to new information and skills, but not because we do it immediately and not because it contacted reinforcement or punishment during observation. 
So that's a very important idea with observational learning. We're not just copying. It's just not imitation. We're learning contingencies. We're le learning information about the behavior. What environmental factors are there? So observational learning is often much more deep than imitation. The behavior occurs after a gap between the model's action. So again, let's say you watch somebody cook a apple pie, and then three nights later, you say, I'm going to cook that same apple pie. That is observational learning. So more examples, a child watches an older sibling receive praise for cleaning their room. Later, child cleans their own room without being told. Child did not receive the praise. Child did not imitate the cleaning the room, but they saw the information and the behaviors being performed understood the contingency, and went clean their own room. The employee observes a coworker successfully navigate a new software program and then applies those strategies to their own work. So you, let's say, observe someone using Central Reach or some other note-taking application, and they're doing things that you weren't familiar with. You watch them do those things. The next day when you're taking notes, you start implementing those own things into your practice. This is observational learning. You can see when you think about examples how different it is than just pure imitation. So our key components of imitation, the model, we need a model and we need an, a learner or an imitator. The model is the antecedent stimulus, which is typically a physical movement. We need the imitative behavior. So it's the behavior of the learner that is formally similar to the model. So we need that formal similarity. And we need immediacy. Imitative behavior occurs within a few seconds after the model. Whereas observational learning, it's a little more deep, right? We have an observer and we have a model, but the observer must attend to the model's behavior. And that's true with imitation as well. The observer must remember the observed behavior. Now be careful with this word, right? We're using remember in the context of me teaching you, but behaviorally, okay, Remember, it's not necessarily something we're going to acknowledge, but it does have to be a skill that they can do as time passes. Reproduction. The observer must be able to physically re reproduce the behavior. And the motivation. The observer must be motivated to perform that behavior because they've observed the contingencies. They've observed what's gotten or not gotten from engaging in that particular behavior. So finally, major differences. Imitation, focused on topographical similarity between the model behavior and the observer behavior, and immediacy. Observational learning, focused on acquisition of information about contingencies, and then how it affects the observer's future behavior, which may or may not be exact imitation. So we cover the same thing many, many different ways because it's not a complex topic. Observational learning, just because it's relatively new to most of you can get a little tricky. Thanks for watching. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please subscribe once again. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out or a card. Study hard. See you soon.